And welcome back to this broadcast of Midnight Magic Musings. It's an off night. It's an off day because we've got something special planned. Earl, what are we doing tonight? We are giving you tomorrow's lottery numbers. And the numbers are 50. Oh, wait, no, that's different. That's a wait, different. Wait, I, I was ready to write it down. Go ahead. Tell me. I need this. Daddy needs we a new pair of shoes. But not that's next week. We'll let you know what tomorrow's lottery numbers are next week. You know? Right. Thanks. That's really uh, helpful. So uh, tonight we are going to be doing a, a quick hit fire, and it's going to be touching on who uh, three characters from the DC Universe that we think deserves a little bit of spotlight, whether we think it's uh, because they're this great character that, that the masses need to see, or, or, or maybe it's just, we just want to selfish pleasure. We want to see this character. And uh, you know what? Three for me, three for the Lord, Cephas. And remember, comment in the in comment section if you agree with us, if you disagree with us, if you think we're both crazy, if you think I'm right, which I know I am, and the Lord see if this is wrong, which we know he is. So go ahead and comment as uh, as we go through here. Let us know if you agree with us or not. So would you want to take number one or you want me to take number one? I will take number one. This character has appeared in animation, but it's never been, a, been really introduced to the masses. And I think out of my three, he's probably the one who would have the most impact both culturally and from an entertainment perspective, I am going with Static Shock. Oh! You know what? Static Shock almost made it out of my list. I love that cartoon. I loved the, the inclusion of him in uh, the Batman Beyond Justice League. Yes, crossover. yes. I love Virgil so much. Uh, but why Why did you pick him? Was it you think he needs to be out there, or is it just your personal pleasure? couple of things. Number one, big fan. He did not start as a DC proper character. He was in another imprint. And they, they kind of pulled him over into yeah. DC. That's number one. So interesting backstory, you know, if, if you follow those kind of things. Number two, he had a great run on Kids WB. Yes, Kids WB was a thing. What is WB? Well, it's what CW basically is now when they merged uh, WB and UPN together. And those letters just didn't fit. So they went with CW. It was a really good run. I think it had it was four or five seasons that they had on uh on Kids WB. He later appears, uh, as you said, in uh the Justice League Unlimited when there was a two-part crossover uh where he's in the future and yep. uh as part of the Justice League. Um it's really cool crossover, by the way, voiced by the same person, which was pretty awesome. Uh DC's always been very big about that in those animated series about keeping uh, keeping it in the family, yeah, it, it's the same people. Um, he was also in the Zeta project, I believe. Zeta appeared in a couple of different things, including Batman Beyond, which is actually where it started for that. And I think I, had a, I think Zeta had a two season run. Um, yeah. see, you you distract me because I'm ready to talk about this stuff. Um, and then he had a pretty good publishing run, and then came the New Fifty Two. Now, I'm not going to lament the New Fifty Two. I could, but that's not the purpose of this broadcast. Um, the idea of the new 52 is very simple. We are going to reboot everything, except we're not going to reboot everything. And everything's <laughs> going to be all new and all different. You know, like Marvel did, except it's not going to be all new and all different. Some things are going to stay the same. And when they merged all this together, it was just too confusing. People were frustrated. If you were a new fan jumping on, you were lost completely. If you had any idea of some of the backgrounds of the characters, for those that you went to read, they didn't match up anymore. And you're just like, what? Uh, Static was one of those titles that was in the new 52. The idea was to have 52 brand new brand new titles. And he was one of them. He lasted eight issues uh, before uh, his series was canceled. In fact, he was, I believe, canceled after uh, issue six. They, yeah. limped, they limped through seven and eight. And, and really, it was because it wasn't selling. Uh, but to be fair, a lot of titles were not selling. If it didn't have an S on it or a bat logo, uh, pretty much it wasn't selling at that point. And to be honest, in the comic book industry right now, there's a lot of truth in that still, um, unfor unfortunately. And I'm a fan of comics. Um, but I, I would say he needs to he needs to make his debut for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is really good to have a younger character. 
Young people are attracted to younger characters, characters that look like them. And here he is, a high school kid who gets yep. these powers. Look, anybody can fly around on a manhole cover. Respect the heck out of it. And that's I what it, it. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, the homemade costume, all of it, tremendous. But I think that would be. I think that would be good for DC to have a bit of a younger character that interacts with all the older ones, and uh, they kind of keep him as the kid. But the kid has a place. The kid has a seat at the table. That's number one. Number two, Static Shock is an African American character. I think having a strong young African American character can go a long way for DC, and maybe, maybe hear me out, bringing in some fans that maybe never gave DC a second look because. You know, cartoons, not their thing. Comic books, not their thing. But hey, what's this about? I'll check it out. So I think that could be a benefit. And then number three, there's a lot of those old timers that are still around that remember the comic book. And I think, and remember the cartoon series and the appearances. I think, I know, I, I think we would be more likely to be supportive of that effort as well because of our positive memories of who he, of who he was. So that would be my first one that I would pick. That's going to be my one straight answer of what I would pick that I think would really be a positive impact on the DC universe. All right. I've rambled on long enough, Earl. Who is your first character? Like I said, Static almost made it for me. And then uh, I, I went with Dark Claw, but I forgot. No, he was the amalgamation universe. So that's not okay. technically just DC. No, no. Not unless it was a Sliders universe. And they all slammed into each other, but go ahead. Let's not talk about that. Okay. Um, Roy Harper. Really? Now, now uh, Roy mm. Harper, he's been in the uh, Justice League, uh, cart uh, Justice League Unlimited. Mm -hmm. He was in, uh, 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 he was also in the, uh, the other one that they just did not that long ago. The other cartoon. What, the Young Justice? Yes, thank you. Young Justice, which I enjoyed thoroughly. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also portrayed uh in uh arrow in the arrow yep. verse yep uh, by Fulton Haynes and uh but I think there's I really like the character of Roy Harper and uh, th this is uh, the reason why I love Robin Hood okay. <laughs> you know so <laughs> we'll start with, with don't bury the lead just go for it I love the the suit and the arrow thing that's part of the reason that that drew me to arrow was because I love that 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 dynamic i love hawkeye because of that dynamic and so you know part of me just loves it because i love the dynamic of the arrow and and the skill and and uh all that that goes along with it and mm -hmm. uh, the other part is uh i forget what the name of the title was it was one of the most popular titles uh comic book titles was when dc took a step toward being more mature and looking at real issues was he was the character that was first hit and addicted to heroin right. uh, because of uh, what was going on in, in the character arc. And, uh, you know, we're family friendly here and every family friendly here. But the fact of the matter is, is that was one of the first big issues that actually took cartoony, you know, characters and actually said this real life happens. Right. You know, uh, his, his fault, you know, and he had a rough uh, upbringing. Uh, because of, uh, you know, his father was a forest ranger and died uh, saving a uh, Native American who then took him in and raised him as uh, his own, who then died. And then he was taken in by <laughs> by Oliver Queen, who we right. know took him in and, uh, you know, raised him until uh, until his drug issues. I mean, we're skipping a lot of history. We are. And the Queen turned his back on him. And well, so... You know, there's just a lot of, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of weight to his backstory, and he, and I like the fact that he has a lot of redemption arcs. You know, and he's human. He's not, he's not a superpowered or an alien or things like that. He was human, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and he dealt with real life. He had a kid. He tried to make the right choice. I need to be here for the kid, so I'm gonna lay down the mantle of a superhero. He was pulled back because of friends. That he he felt a patriotic duty to work with the government. He you know answered the call. He he spiraled out of control when he lost his child. You know it was it's just a very storied, very very real uh, history that I can identify with. Right. Not not saying I'm a you know a superhero. 
No, but I mean, it's real life. You know, I have the, I have kids, so I couldn't imagine what it'd be like to lose a kid. You know, I, I, I sometimes feel overwhelmed and I eat pizza. I don't do heroin, but I eat pizza or I eat ice cream. You know, there are sure. like that aren't healthy. You know, eating pizza is healthy unless you eat four piece, entire pizzas. And then, you know, you eat two tubs of ice cream, at which point it might no longer be healthy. <laughs> that That is a cry for help. No, it's a cry for the restroom is what that is. A, Pepperoni is. But either way, you a know. A gastroenterologist at the very least. Or something. But I mean, uh, I, the reason I chose uh, Harper was uh, he went through so much. And, you know, so much loss and that he came back. Mm-hmm. When he fought it, and, and the fact is he was human while he was doing it. And uh, so that, that was my choice. And I know he's been live action in the Arrowverse, but I didn't really care for that verse of, of Colton Haynes. It was a different variant, but, you know, it's, uh, you, you go with whatever uh, director wanted to go with. So I'm fine with that, but I would, I would, I would love to see an actual Roy Harper. And again, he starts off young, you know, it's something True. that, uh, you know, younger people, young, you know, youth and young go- adults can identify with. These are real issues. These are real problems, and they still exist. You know what? I like that choice. But I'm going to take number two here. And uh, in the words of Coach Lee Corso on College Game Day, who even in his in his 80s is still on there, and I, I just appreciate seeing him every week and that they take good care of him. I'm going to give you number two. And uh, this one's just going to be out there because I'm just fascinated by that. Um, that is Detective Chimp. <laughs> now for those of you at home going has uh the lord lost his mind the answer very simply is yes yes, <laughs> yes i have now his publication history a little spotty he was in the 50s he was kind of with the wonder dog you know then he disappeared then he came back in the 80s he kind of popped up all over the place uh he actually was in the original crisis on infinite earths um, he had a cameo because he was in, um, what do you call it? Ape City. That, that's where, uh, what's his name? Gr- uh, Grodd lives, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, he was in that. Um, and then he showed up in The Flash and all these other ones. Uh, recently, he has been a member of the Justice League Dark, I think. Last five or six years, uh, he's been a member of that. Uh, incredibly smart and intelligent. Where's... Uh, the hat like Sherlock Holmes wears. So it's it's a huge callback to uh you know Sir uh what is it Arthur Conan Doyle who does uh Sherlock Holmes. Uh yep. he he's smart, he's intelligent, he's strong. And listen, if James Gunn is gonna take over DC and make it in his some could say warped image, I would say creatively uh free image, I think Detective Chimp needs to be there. That's the kind of character I can get behind. Earl, do you want to have a comment about that? You know what? I'll, I, I, I'm not going to argue with that because of uh, who my number two is. Well, then this is going to be interesting. Again, I was torn. Uh, part of me wanted to go with uh, Vigilante, mm-hmm. uh, the cowboy version. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I decided to go with the... Uh, um, you know, Talkie Tawny. I'm sorry? Talkie Tawny. Explain. He is a Bengal tiger that was, uh, uh, he was given the power to, to become a humanoid and speak. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually worked with Captain Marvel, Sazam. Uh, so he is, think like Tony the Tiger, except helping, uh, <laughs> traveling around with Captain Marvel and helping with, uh, you know, with this and that. (laughs) You know what? Don't hate me. The reason I I know him and like him is because somehow, and I don't know how, because I don't know if you had any of the Captain Marvel uh, comics, but I remember having two issues with with, uh, Talkie Toddy in it. And I don't know if it was two that I got from you or two that... uh, my grandmother, my mom had, uh, you know, when mm-hmm. we went to the store right there off of university and went in there and perused, but uh, he wore like a tweed suit jacket. 
you know, the whole tweet shoot and uh, <laughs> was very proper. It was just ridiculous, and I loved it, and I don't know why. And I only watched, read, like, two. But you know what? Give If you can give me Cheetah and Wonder Woman to, to mix opinions, you can give me Talkie Tommy. So, you know, Shazam 2 is coming out. Give me my my tweed jet, my tweed suit wearing a bingo tiger, please. Well, you know, the grief I'd love to give you, I can't because I actually think that's that's just wickedly brilliant. Um, <laughs> if you if you follow his character in the comics, really, um, you know, post Flashpoint, I guess we would say uh, he he was uh, friends with uh, Shazam for a lot of the time. In fact, there's one issue I. I don't remember. It's, it's been a while ago where they uh, got into a big fight and he got thrown in the zoo. Uh, and then Shazam tried to get him out of it by turning him into another creature. He cast the spell wrong, shockingly. Uh, it's just a mess. But I think that is wicked. Now, I do have an honorable mention uh, before I give my third. Um, okay. And that is John Henry Irons. Is my honorable mention, who is Steel. Uh yeah. I believe in the power of a character who is a good father to represent us on screen. We try our best every day. Here's a guy who's already doing that. He's brilliant, and he builds a Superman suit to help fight crime. And when Superman dies originally 8,000 years ago in the comic books when we were young, um, he steps up to fill that void. One of the four Supermen. And I, I would encourage people, if you're interested in that, go find it on comiXology or something like that. It, it's out there. Um, there what's that? There, the novel of it, the, uh, the death and life of Superman, you know, whether you want to read it in the, the graphic novel variant mm -hmm. or in a novel variant, uh, I, I concur. I, I love me some steel. I think that would be a, a very interesting uh, character. And I think you could do so much with that. That's a franchise waiting to happen. I really truly believe that, but Here's the one I picked to, to kind of end on a lighter note. I picked a member of the Green Lantern Corps. Squirrel? I, no, 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 I no, no. I picked Purdue. For those who are not familiar with Purdue, it is basically a chicken who talks and has a Green Lantern ring and may sort of lean. Uh, to the side of may he may have been in an asylum more than once. Um, so therefore he is, how do I say this gently? A little unpredictable when working with his teammates and such. Not a very good teammate because they never know what he's going to do. Um, but yeah, that Purdue name is absolutely a tie to the Purdue Chicken Company uh, yeah. manufacturer. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And so James Gunn, I'm calling on you, brother. I need you. We need to see a live action Purdue. Literally, he fits in with the Guardian of the Galaxy motif. He's out there. And I think if you did it right and they get this thing going, he could be a very valuable member of the DC. Well, I guess the DCU, not DCEU. We don't call that anymore. So if you want to. Godfather gun. You know, right. That's correct. So if you want a real one, I guess I'd have to go with John Henry Iron. But uh, for just the the kid in me, I would love to see Purdue. I would like to see a talking, walking, stand up, you know, four foot, five foot chicken uh, with a Green Lantern ring. I think it'd be fantastic. And that's all. That's my final one. Earl, how are you going to close this up? What do you have? How can you follow up to that? To Talkie Tawny and then the, the chicken that walks? I we're mean, we're how... very animal based. I don't know if you've noticed, but we definitely are into that. Well, uh, this character... Uh, they, he's been around. He uh, he picked up a lot of uh, popularity back in 2006 during an animated film. Uh, he then also has been portrayed most recently uh, live action in a series. But uh, there's still something. I think it rings inside of him. And this character is the second boy wonder. Jason Todd. Who takes on the mantle of the Red Hood? And now this is why I'm going with Jason Todd. Not because he was so beloved as the Boy Wonder. Because, yeah, because that's that's not true. Because we know why what happened to him, and we know whose fault it is. I was too young to vote. I didn't vote. Y'all murdered him. <laughs> so he'd still be alive today had you not voted. 
Or had you voted? You might have been the deciding vote. I might have been the deciding vote. No, he 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 was killed by a landslide. <laughs> or a crowbar and explosion, depending on how you look at it. Sure. But so one of the reasons that we like Batman and he's willing to cross the line, the, the line that Superman will not cross. Right. But Batman still has a line that he won't cross. So with the Red Hood, he does what, similar to, we're crossing uh, uh, streams here, what Marvel's Punisher does. Right. If you deserve to get put down, he will put you down. Sure. But his, part of his uh, problem isn't, uh, co- isn't completely his fault. He was tossed into the Lazarus pit after he had been dead for a little while, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, with that, tra- you know, that resurrection, that training, and he's damaged and he's emotionally damaged because how would you like to come back as I I'm, I was Robin, but I was the one Robin that Batman didn't save. I, I, I kind of feel like in a wrestling storyline term, that's that's a heel turn waiting to happen. You yeah. know, you turned on me. I didn't turn on you kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're not willing to put down the one who killed me. You rescued me, and how many times have you put the Joker in jail or in an right. arc? But you know, so he is—he's mostly damaged. He's physically, uh, you know, has a uh, you know damage from uh, you know he has twitches and stuff still from the Lazarus Pit, and and he has phantom pains from getting beat to death. And so you know, and then he's got. Uh, daddy issues he's got uh he's got abandonment issues he's got uh you know all these problems but he still wants to do the right thing albeit it's through uh through uh uh a code that is more violent than uh bruce wings you were willing to cross right but you know he does he, so yeah for me red hood is it but he's also got ties where you know your family he's he he'll he'll go to bat for you or go to crowbar with you (laughs) i was gonna say so i mean for me and i think part of the reason he's gotten so popular over the last 15 18 years is is that and this might be part of the problem uh societies our morality we've seen so much where we, we've gotten so desensitized because right. of everything that's gone on over the last several, several years. I mean, we're now to the point where there are our line that crosses even further out because things have uh, atrophied or things have progressed this way so far. So for, for, and I'm speaking personally as well. So, I mean, for me, the Batman is now a Band-Aid. I used to love Batman. But I'm like, how many times can you arrest the same guy and then get released or break out? And everything they do after that, it's your fault. It's like Superman in uh, in the future. Uh, the future. Uh, what, what what is the one I'm talking about? Uh, the Kingdom Come series. You know, he'd had it. How many times are we going to put y'all away and you know they die? And so I think part of the reason Jason Todd is is more popular is one, he's younger, so he he's affiliated more with youthful uh, readers and watchers and, and things like that, but he's also willing to go further mm-hmm. to get and as a father now, on the one hand, I'm like yeah, you know, the lines are blurred but as a father, I'm like, the law's there for a reason, if you cross that line, you become, like what Batman said, once you cross that line, you become like them and uh, I heard somebody once say and I forget where, said the law isn't for the criminals or the villains the law's for the heroes, the good guys. And so they know don't cross the sign because then you become the bad guys. It's not for the bad guys who are doing what they're doing. It's for the good guys to make sure they stay the good guys. So well, for me, go ahead. No, I'm really, sorry, go ahead. No, no. So for me, that's, I, I, so I started liking Batman again because he still has a line. That's part of the reason I started liking Superman because I used to dislike him because he was the Boy Scout. It's part of the reason why I hated the game crossing themes here. I hated Cyclops because he was always, the big blue, well, not anymore, but <laughs> he used to be the big blue Boy Scout. You know, the this is right, that's wrong, end of it. And I hated that. I love the antiheroes, but as I've gotten older, I've realized that there's a reason why those white hats exist. 
you got to have them. You can't, society wouldn't exist if you didn't have some moral absolute or framework from which to, to operate. So uh, the injustice series, mm -hmm. injustice, God's, uh, God's among us. Um, I don't think they'll ever do it because I'm sure there's some licensing issues with, uh, I guess, who, who has, I guess a claim has, uh, or had, I think a claim went bankrupt actually. So maybe there's not, or whoever, Bottom of bankruptcy did. <laughs> it's not Konami. I think it is a claim, but um, that would be an interesting chapter. Gods uh, and monsters sounds a lot like gods and monsters. Well, in that case, uh, you know, the Joker blows up. He detonates a nuclear weapon, blows mm -hmm. up Metropolis, killing Lois. A or, pregnant. Or, or so you think. Yeah. But in reality, um, Superman is fighting Doomsday. And is just pounding the heck out of Doomsday, only to realize he's been tricked. And mm -hmm. what he's really doing is pounding Lois, which is just uh, those first two, three, four pages of that issue. And I'm sorry for sidetracking, are just heart wrenching. And you talk about what would Superman do if you made him mad enough? Yeah. If you want to know, go read that series too and see. And the, the other reason I bring that up is, um, you know, Jason Todd knew there was a line. Mm -hmm. Dick Dick Grayson, who became Nightwing and had been Batman some too. I mean, he's he's yeah. carried a lot of different mantles. Knew there was a line. Um, uh, who's the who's the name? Tim Drake. Tim Drake knew there was a line. Harry and, Kelly. Yep. And then comes someone else named Damian Wayne as Robin, yep. who, if you read the Injustice series, had a real problem with <laughs> the line. And I won't spoil it any further. So when they have the Batman, the Brave and the Bold uh, series that's coming out, we'll talk more about that as it gets as it goes into production and, and goes further in. I've got a few thoughts that I that I would like to say about that, but I want to stay on topic. Earl, thank you for sharing your three. I uh, appreciate you listening to my three as well. There are tons more we could talk about, but we just wanted to do three and do a short little little update, short little video to kind of talk about where our heads are. Uh, where we are in fandom. And so with that, I am the Lord, Lord Cephas. I was joined this evening or late tonight, depending on how you look at it, because it is Midnight Magic Musings by the Earl of Florida. Again, we thank you for listening. We thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Do you agree with our choices? I'm guessing probably no, because some were a little bit random, but tell us who you might want to see in film on it on a series either television or streaming or in a video game hey there there's no reason to limit yourself there um or in some type of animation so for the earl i'm the lord cephas have a wonderful evening have a wonderful day wherever you're listening wherever you're watching we love you we appreciate you we'll see you next time take care everybody